Welcome back everyone, good to see you again. Today we're heading to France to look at some creepy and often disturbing cases that have remained unsolved there over the years. There's a lot of information out there about them, pages of the stuff, trust me, I've read most of it, but as of yet, still no real answers. Let's see what you guys make of them. My name is Danny Burke and this is the Top 10 Scary French Mysteries. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Lost in the Catacombs. The Catacombs are a vast underground complex in Paris, built as a mass graveyard centuries ago. In the early 2000s, a video emerged that claimed to show footage from the early 1990s by an unidentified man whose camera was allegedly discovered many years later by a group of explorers deep inside the tunnels. Now they found the tape covered in dust, but the tape was still intact and playable. In it, we see the man heading through the darkness. At first, he takes footage of rooms and bones and all that kind of creepy stuff. Sometimes he even places an arrow made of bones pointing in the direction that he came from. After a while though, his sort of calm exploration turns to sheer panic when he realizes he doesn't know where he is or how to get out of the tunnels. He starts to run, but then he gets even more lost. All of a sudden, he drops the camera on the ground. We see him run off into the darkness. The camera keeps on rolling until the battery runs out. Nobody knows who he is and what became of him. It's thought he may just have become another body among the millions of remains. Moving on now to number nine, we have Man in the Iron Mask. That's the name given to an unidentified prisoner who was captured in 1669 in France. He was held in the Bastille and other French jails for several decades until he died in 1703. Nobody knew who he was or why he was imprisoned. Perhaps even more interesting though is his appearance. They say that nobody ever saw his face because he always wore a black velvet mask over it and at some point even a mask made of iron. The writer Voltaire said the chin of the iron mask was composed of steel springs, which allowed him to eat food through it. It's been suggested that he was the illegitimate son of King Louis XIV, secretly in prison for being homosexual by his father. Others said he was actually the half-brother of the king, and that the king locked him up in order to secure his line. In the centuries since then, it's remained a mystery as to who this man was, why he was in prison for all those years, and why exactly he had to wear the iron mask. Next up at number eight now, we have the Hope Diamond. This is perhaps one of the most famous jewels in the world. 45.52 carats that is thought to have originated in India. It was brought to France by the gem merchant Jean-Baptiste Tavernier in 1666. Eventually it was passed down through many people and is now owned by the Smithsonian Institution. There's the facts, but now let's talk about the curse. They say the blood diamond is cursed, that anyone who owns or wears it will have misfortune and tragedy visit their lives. The list of people who have owned it is full of people who met gruesome deaths. The gem merchant who brought it from India to Paris was torn to pieces by wild dogs. A princess who wore it was later lynched by a French mob. One Turkish owner was later thrown off a cliff along with his wife and young child. Even a man who simply polished it once was imprisoned and tortured later on. Now of course, these all could be coincidences. You have to think that a gem like this is going to make its way into the hands of rich and powerful people who have have been historically kind of magnets for revolutions and violence. That hasn't stopped this curse story from spreading though. Some even say it's the reason why the gem still sits behind glass in a museum, safe from harming anyone else. I think it's to stop thieves though. Moving on to number seven now, we have poison bread. On August 16th, 1951, the inhabitants of the small town of Pont Saint Esprit all fell ill. People started hallucinating about being consumed by fire or giant plants or huge monstrous beasts. A worker tried to drown himself because he said his belly was being eaten by a snake. A 60 year old grandmother threw herself against the wall and broke three ribs. A man saw his heart escaping through his feet and begged a doctor to put it back in place. Many people were taken to insane asylums in straight jackets. There was no treatment, no cure, and only one explanation. Someone had poisoned the bread that had been baked for all the townspeople the night before. Up to 10 people were killed. 46 were in asylums for life, and many more unable to ever hold jobs or lead normal lives ever again. In the decades since then, the scandal has largely been smoothed over, and whether it was an accident or a killer has remained an unsolved mystery. At the number six spot now, we have the death of Van Gogh. 
This famous painter wasn't French, he was Dutch, but he lived and died in France, in the village of Auvers sur Oise, to be precise. On July 29th, 1890, Van Gogh returned to the inn where he lived after nightfall, holding his stomach. The family who owned the inn were concerned and they asked him if he was okay. He told them, No, but I have. His words then trailed off as he made his way up to his room. During the night, he admitted that he had tried and failed to shoot himself in the chest and commit suicide. Nevertheless, he died two days later. Over a century on, though, a different theory emerged. Some say he was accidentally shot by a 16 year old boy in the town. The suicide letter may just have been the draft of a letter to his brother. It sounded far too optimistic for someone about to kill themselves. It's thought the whole thing was an accident, but the people covered it up. Perhaps even Van Gogh was in on it himself. Either that or he was murdered in cold blood. Moving on to number five now, we have Murder in the Alps. On September 5th, 2012, three members of the same family were found murdered inside their car near Lake Annecy in the French Alps. When someone arrived on the scene, they found the mother, father, and grandmother were all shot dead. The car was found reversed into the corner of a lay-by with the engine still running and in reverse gear. The doors were all locked. Another man who was not connected to the family was found shot dead next to the car with his bike. When police arrived, they found a seven-year-old daughter of the family near the scene with a gunshot wound in her shoulder and serious head wounds. After eight hours of evidence searching in the car, police began to remove the bodies and then they found another four-year-old daughter hiding underneath her mother's skirt in the footwell of the car. She had been too terrified to move or even make a sound. Both girls survived the attack and were given new identities. To this day, police have been unable to figure out who the murderer was and what their motive was. They could even still be out there willing to do this random act of violence again. Moving on to number four now, we have Gregory Villemin. On October 16th, 1984, Michael Villemin answered his phone and heard a hoarse voice on the end say, I've taken Gregory and drowned him in the river. Gregory was his five-year-old nephew. He ran to his brother's house. When he got there, Gregory's parents were in a panic as they couldn't find him. The uncle told them about the phone call. The police were called and after four hours, they found Gregory's body right there in the river. The next morning, the grieving family got an anonymous letter that simply said, I hope you die of grief. It was postmarked the day before Gregory had been kidnapped and murdered. Clearly someone planned this. The family told the police they had received calls from the same person months before. He would insult them, laugh obscenities, and then hang up the phone, but he never mentioned who he was or why he was doing this. In the months after Gregory's murder, the letters kept coming. Taunting, cruel letters. Newspapers in France nicknamed the mysterious sender Le Corbeau, French for the crow, after a slang term for someone who sends letters without signing them. One of them simply read, that's my revenge, you b in the years since then, nobody has ever come any closer to figuring out who the crow was or why he murdered little Gregory. Moving on to number three now, we have the Papin sisters. This is a murder mystery, but not because we don't know who did it, but why. French sisters Leah and Christine Papin began working as servants for a family in France in 1926. People said they were a little bit odd and never really talked to anyone except themselves. Nothing too strange though. Then, one night in February 1933, Mr. Lancillon came home to find his wife and their daughter dead on the floor in a pool of blood. Their eyes had been gouged out and their faces smashed in. The Papin sisters were locked in their room and when police finally opened it, they found the sisters lying on the bed together with a bloody hammer nearby. They immediately confessed to the crimes but gave no reason as to why they did it. Leah was given life in prison for being the mastermind of the plan. Christine suffered a mental breakdown and tried to gouge her own eyes out. She was eventually released from prison in 1943 but gave no clues as to why the pair were murdered in such cold blood. Next up on number two now, we have the Mobile Jordan incident. In 1901, two English women visited a chateau in the grounds of the famous Palace of Versailles. They claimed that suddenly, during their visit, they traveled back in time. A strange feeling came over them, a feeling of oppression and dreariness. They saw men who looked like palace gardeners who told them to move along. They noticed a cottage with a woman and a girl in the doorway. The woman was holding out a jug to the girl. They later described it as a living picture. They saw a man sitting beside a garden kiosk wearing a cloak. 
cloak and large shady hat. His face seemed to have smallpox on it. They reached the gardens of the palace and saw a lady sketching on the grass. He wore a very old fashioned dress. After the incident, they didn't talk to each other about it for a week, but when they did, they began to think they had travelled back in time to the late 18th century and that the woman they had seen was actually Marie Antoinette, the last Queen of France. Their story has been examined and retold countless times and has gripped the paranormal community. Some say it's been thoroughly debunked, but others are convinced that the full story suggests that this was a genuine slip in time. And finally, number one, we have the Dupont de Ligion murders. This case involved the murder of all five members of the same family in Nantes. The Dupont de Ligion family is an old French aristocratic family. The mother and four children were murdered in April 2011 and their bodies found at their home in Nantes. The father had disappeared. He became the prime suspect. The bodies were found rolled in lime and buried beneath the patio of the house. Since then, Xavier, the father of the family, had disappeared off the map. He was last seen on CCTV at a hotel on April 14th of that year. The investigation almost went cold in the years after. Then, on January 9th, 2018, police raided a monastery in the village where Xavier had last been seen after several worshippers had seen him there. Police initially struggled to make headway as the monks at the monastery have taken a vow of silence. However, after a two and a half hour search, they determined that the reports were a case of mistaken identity and the person believed to be Xavier was actually a monk who just bore a resemblance to him. Alright guys, that's enough French mysteries for now. Where should we head to next? We haven't done America yet. I thought that would be, you know, too much of an obvious one to start on. I'm hoping to turn this into basically the same thing as our Urban Legends series, but more focusing on mysteries. Not so much myths and legends, but like mysteries that haven't been solved. I think they're really interesting. Hopefully you do too. Let me know what country you want to see next. In the meantime, thanks for watching as always guys. My name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video.